Then the heathen warriors cut him down, and both fighters who stood beside him, Alfnoth and Wolfmere, both lay still along their lord and gave up their lives. Those who no longer wished to be there and then turned from fight, Oda's sons were first in the flight from there. Godric was taken away from the fray and abandoned a good man who often in the past had given him a horse. He had leapt onto the steed and which his lord had owned in its trappings, which it was wrong to do. And with him and his brothers both rang, Godwin and Godwig. They did not care for fighting, but went away from the battle and sought the woods, fled in refuge and saved their lives. More men than this were in any way fit, fitting if they had taken thought of all the rewards which he had bestowed on them for their benefit. Ofer had said to him earlier that day at the speaking place that he held a meeting and that many there brave, spoke bravely who later would not last out in strife that folk, folk leaders had fallen. Athelred's warrior they could see that the heath, hearth companions, that their leader was cut down. Forward there, from there went the proud Danes. The undaunted men eagerly made haste. They wished uh, for, for one of these two things: to give up their lives to the average, de to avenge the dear men, man. So Afric's son e e egged them forward. A warrior, a warrior young in winters, he uttered a speech, spoke of courage. Afwin said, Remember those words which we often spoke over our mead and beer, and when, when we put up boasts at the bench about hard strife, we heroes in the hall. Now, whoever is brave may prove it. I wish to make my ancestry known to all that I come from a great family among the Mercians. My grandfather was named El Elham. A wise elderman, lucky in this world, lanes in this land, sh sh shall not be uh, able to blame me or say that I wish to leave this freed, this army, to seek my homeland. My, now my leader lies cut down, in, uh, cut own in the fighting. It is the greatest of griefs for me that it both my kinsman and my lord. That then he went forward, bore his grief in mind, so that he, he wounded a man with a spear point, a seaman in the host, so that he fell on the ground, slain by his weapon. The friends began to encourage each other, those comrades, brothers in arms, so, so that they went forwards. Ofa shook his spear, his ash spear and spoke. You have emboldened us all indeed, Afwin, us lanes in time of danger. Now our lord lies dead, the earl on the, on the earth. It is necessary for us all that each of us shall encourage the other warrior to warfare while his weapons he can still heave and hold. A hard blade, a spear, a good sword. Godric has completely betrayed us, the cowardly son of Oda. Many a man believed when he rode off, with, off on the horse on the proud steed that it was our lord. Because of that, the folk were split up in the field. The shield wall broken apart, let, out, let what he may begin be destroyed, because he has caused so many men to flee. Leo Sunu spoke and raised up his Lindenwood shield, his shield as protection. He said to the warriors, I give my word from this place that I do not mean to flee one foot space. Rather, I will go forward to avenge my friendly lord in fights. Steadfast warriors around Stummerfield need, need not blame me in their speech together. Now my friend is fallen, that I am home again, that I am going home lordless, fl fleeing from the fight. Rather, shall a weapon take me, a spear point, an iron sword? He spoke very angrily and resolutely. He scorned flight. Then Dunier spoke and shook his dart. The lowly Kiels called out over all, bade that each of the warriors avenge Britnoth. He must not draw back who thinks to avenge his lord and lord on the foe, nor care for his life. They moved forward then, did not take heed for their lives. The war band's men began to fight hard. Those 
fierce spear, spear wielders and pray to God that they should be allowed to avenge their friendly lord and bring death to their foes. The hostage began to help them eagerly. He was a hard kindred from the North Umbians. His name was Askelfirth, Ekelaf's son. He did not sh shrink back at the war play, rather he sent forth arrows swiftly. Sometimes he hit a shield, sometimes pierced a warrior, and time and time again he dealt out wounds while he was able to wield his weapons. Edwil the Tall still stood at the forefront, ready and keen. He spoke boasting words that he did not mean to flee one foot's length of land. He turned to turn back while a man that he... Then he, he lay dead. He broke through the shield wall and fought against the warriors until his ring giver of the, on the seamen had been had worthily avenged before he lay among the slay, slain. Athelric, the noble comrade, did likewise. Keen and eager to advance, he fought single-mindedly, the brother of, of Sifbeth, and many others clove through the ring shield, ridge shield, keenly they fought. The shield rim burst and the mail coat sang. A song of terror. Then in the fighting struck over at the seaman so that he fell to the ground. And then Gad's kinsmen sought the ground. Ofer was quickly cut down in battle, yet he carried out his lord's what his lord had bidden, just as he had vowed before his ring giver that they should, should that they both would either ride into the stronghold come safely home or all the host die of wounds at the place of slaughter loyally he lay beside his lord then came the clash of shields the seamen strode up angered by warfare one often a spear went through a doomed man's body Witstan was then went forward the son of put of Thurstan and fought against the foreman, foemen. He was the slayer of three men in the throng before Wiglem's kinsmen lay among the slain. It was hard, a hard encounter there. They stood fast, those warriors in the strife. Fighting men fell wearily from their wounds. Gore fell to the ground. All the while, Oswald and Edward, both those brothers, encouraged the fighting men, bade in their speech to their beloved kinsmen, that they must hold in the, it out in their time of need there, use their weapons without weakening. Brithnell spoke, he raised his shield and brandished his spear. He was an old retainer trainer. With great courage he addressed the troop, Mine shall be the harder, heart the keener, courage the greater, as our strength dimin diminishes. Here lies our leader cut down, the good man in the dirt. May he ever grieve, who knows now thinks to turn from this war play. I am old in life, I do not wish to leave, but rather beside my lord, beside so dear a man, I do not think to live, to lie. Likewise, though encouraged by Athelgar's son, Godric, onward to the, to the struggle, often he sent a spear, a slaughter shaft, spinning into the Vikings. Thus he led the f fighting in the, in the battle, hewed and slew, till he fell in the fighting. That was not Godric who had turned away from the strife. And that was the Battle of Morden. Um, this is the second part of the two parts, so keep keep um, that in mind. There's, the your poem is in two parts. Thank you for listening.